Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. That's a silly name we've got for our unboxing series. Today we are going to be, or I am going to be unboxing Vinhos, the deluxe edition from Eagle Griffin Games. It's a big heavy Euro game and a big heavy box by Vital Lacerta. I've heard fantastic things about this game. I've been really looking forward to checking this out. Now I do have to thank Eagle Griffin for providing me with a review copy of the game. No other compensation was received. So I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, normally answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. You can send me your game night questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Consider us a dear Abbey for gamers. You can find answers to those questions from other gamers like yourself at our website, tabletopbellhop.com, or on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you should be able to find on YouTube, Stitcher, or the podcaster of your choice. So today we are answering a very important question, and that is what's in this large, heavy box. So I'm going to be taking a look at Vinhos. For those of you who are joining us here live in our chat room, feel free to answer or ask questions in the chat, and I'll get to them when I can. So we're just going to get right to it and take a look at this big, heavy box. No, nope, I have not played Vinhos at all. So I don't have any experience with the game. I have not read the rules. I don't actually know how to play. I've just heard really good things about this game, and I've been very curious about it. So as I'm going through the components, I'm not going to know what's what or what it does or what it's for. So one of the things to note, and I am going to guess, I'm going to open this and find a ton of punch boards, is when you buy the game, it comes like this. The lid does not fit on the box. My guess is there's going to be a ton of cardboard in here. Once I punch that cardboard, it's going to shut. Now, I'm not going to have you watch me punch the cardboard. I'm just going to show off what I find in this box, and you get to hear my thoughts as I see it for the first time. So we're going to start off by removing the lid. It's a nice, thick box. What I do dig is it's got notches, so it makes it easy to come off. So the first thing we have is a bunch of ads for other Eagle Griffin games. I'm not even going to bother putting that back in the box. And as I expected, we have a ton of cardboard. So this is all sticking out. Well, here, let's put this back. And you can see it from the top of the box. Mmm, cardboard smell. We have a ton of punch boards here and more underneath. So we're just going to hold these up. They are two-sided. And I say they're very Euro-looking on this side. Very boring. And some rather nice-looking art. Very clear. Iconography looks pretty good. Um, I see Meeple, I see Workers. Again, I've not played this game. Um, very thick card. I actually thought I had two here. You can kind of see that. That's a nice thick card here. I'm going to punch one piece. That's a tight punch. That's a little... Came off clean. Nothing's going to fall out of this as I'm doing this. That is a very tight cut with two little tabs. Um, perfectionists may want a hobby knife to cut the little tabs that are going to be left once you do that. I'm going to put this into the lid of the box as we go. We have Well, I know people hate paper money. How do you feel about cardboard money? That's what we've got here. I got to say it's got a definite heavy euro look to it. Something about the muted colors. Um, the fat, everything's matte instead of gloss, even. Just gives me the impression of a heavy euro. <laughs> wow. So I'm peeking. That's it for the board. For now. I think I see some more. Okay, we have not one, not two, but three rule books. And it's not because they're in other languages. So we have the Deluxe Edition Reference Books book, which shows the contents of the box. I'm going to flip through this quickly. Oh, how to set the game up. That's going to be a table hog, it looks like. We have variant setup for three or four players. Um, setup for the special vintage 2016. I have no idea quite what that means. The list of the different action tiles. So there's a couple different setups. Um, this is set up for the 2010 reserve. <laughs> so you have multiple different ways to play the game. I'm reminded a bit of um, 
uh, Capstone Games. I'm totally forgetting the name. Spinning Jenny and the Wheel House. Tri no, not Tricurion. I might remember it by the end. But it's a game that has two different variants, one easy and one simple. Um, we have dark background with, or sorry, light background with dark text, which I appreciate, but rather small font. That is not easy to read with my eyes. Then we have the special vintage 2016 rule book, and we have the 2010 reserve rule book. So my guess is the game came out in 2010 and they put out a 2016 variant, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, gameplay, year overview, start of the year, action phase. Lots of examples, lots of shots of the actual pieces that are part of the game. I realize that should be a given, but sometimes it's not. Um, everything looks pretty clear here. I see lots of worker placement spots. We're just going to hold this one up. And then I'm going to kind of tip it this way. We're going to flip through a little bit. Hold up a few more pages. We are looking at some very small fonts. Jumping to... 15 pages that still rules. End of game and final scoring actually uses the back. So 16 page rule book, three column, very small font. Not a light read. And that is for the 2016 special rule book. And then we have the 2010 rule book, which actually feels thicker. Yes, it is. So this is 20 pages. So this is probably the core rules and the other is the variants. I'm not going to let you see all of these. There's just way too much to show. Um, so they did the Mayfair Games thing, which I like. Okay, so this I'm just knowing. So there's a summary of play along the side. So the rules are in the middle, and then there's a summary showing all the, the, the graphics and the actual board pieces. That's a nice touch. I like that. All right, now we're still, we're finally at flat with the top of the box here. And we have what looks like player boards in player colors. Nice, thick. Um, these are actually matted boards. That's cool. You, um, it's a certain style that you sometimes two-sided matted board. You often see matted boards in, in um, board games. We have matted boards. More matted board and one more matted board. Ooh, I see shinies. It's making me happy. Look at this. We have insert with a cover. Happiness there. And look at this. Wow. I don't know, but there's like a menu. Yeah, it's a special vintage gameplay year overview and the 2010. So here is, is almost looks like a menu you would get if you're at a vineyard and doing a winery tour that has the summary of play. And there are four of these nice already pre-folded. I dig that. That's a nice touch. Then we have a board. Oh, wow. Okay. This may be a difficult one to show off. So I'm going to show off some of this right here. Look at that. That look heavy euro -y enough for you? I dig it. Arkwright! That's the game I couldn't remember earlier. This is a two-sided board, and it is pretty massive. Wow. Look at this. Okay. That's one side. And this is the even busier side. Oh, I feel my brain burning already. This makes Teo to walk and look like a light walk in the park. Look at that. That's a happy board to me. I like myself a heavy game now and then. This is looking good. Wow, there is so much. Look at how dense the info is, too, on this. Like, look at all this stuff going on just in that one section. And then I got to say, I know this is the deluxe edition. Nice touch. Look at that. I'm picking up player. Spot for everything. I really like that. We're going to take a look at some of these components. But there's even a lid so it doesn't spill. And look at a notch to be able to get to it. Look at that. Oh, oh, I can't get this side up. Look, there's another notch. Nice. Bonus points, Eagle Griffin. Bonus points for this. I kind of wish I knew where all this stuff goes because I just sorted as I was opening this, but I don't. Okay, so we have baggies with baggies within baggies here. Um, I'm not going to bother pulling those out. Those are just wooden discs in the four colors and one cube. I don't think... Eh. You know what? I'll do it. Why not? For here, right? Might as well show it off. Just to show the thickness. Wooden disc. There's a cube in here, too. I am literally going to throw these into random spots in here because I don't know where they belong. Uh, again, pro tip, desiccant package, right? It's there to stop humidity. If you live somewhere where it gets humid, keep this in your game. Don't throw it out. 
crossing the box with everything else, it'll prevent mold. All right, then we have a couple different meeple. One's definitely a farmer. I don't know what the other guy is. It's probably the farmer and the owner. Um, I am not going to comment on their colors. And we have some barrels. I'm going to guess these are for scoring. So you have some wine barrels and red, yellow, blue, and purple. Again, my wife's going to hate this game because there is no green. What's with companies not putting green? Because you don't put green and red to make it colorblind accessible. So actually, that's a bonus for Eagle Griffin. And I end up with an extra baggie. I always like that. What else is nice to see is there are baggies in here. And it looks like stickers. I don't know where these stickers got to go, but there's some little tiny stickers. Oh, I bet you they go on those discs. We're going to throw those in there before they get lost. Then we're going to open this bag full of components. Bag full of components. Another one of these. Again, don't throw them out. We have barrels in all the colors. Which is weird. I don't know why there's barrels in all the colors here and over there. Yeah, we have barrels here and barrels here. So I don't know, extra barrels, who knows. Yellow barrels. Red barrels. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in this game. A lot of wooden components. Blue barrels. Purple barrel. Then we have discs, same deal. Purple, red, blue, yellow. Then we have more meeple. Big tall meeple. Again in the four player color. I'm just going to hold up the yellow. Yellow meeple. The meeple. Well, it's not quite as tall for a meeple. A meeple with long legs. Yeah, I don't know what. Maybe this is a bag of extra components in case you lose some. Because here's a whole bunch more farmers. Again, I already held one up, but I'll do it again. So you have like a, a guy with a hoe. And a whole bunch more of the other meeple that I, I still can't tell. Let's say he's holding an ice cream cone. I'm sure that's not it. It's probably like a taster because he's holding a wine glass. It's a rough guess. I don't actually know. Then we have some plain wood components. We have a wooden cylinder and a bunch of wooden circles. Take out cylinder, cylinder, and discs. The circles, the disc, and disc. And last, some wooden cubes. Those I'm not going to bother taking out. They're little wood, plain, unpainted wooden cubes. There we go. That is all of the components and the really nice box to store it all. Um, I've already kind of split some of these into player colors, though I have no idea what actually belongs where. We're going to put this lid back on. I dig it. Look at that. Like, that's nice. See, I kind of split them up. Oh, sorry. I split them up by color. No clue if that's how it's supposed to go. A ridiculously huge board. The menu like player reference sheets, the player boards, which I obviously have to spread out these menus, but this isn't all going to fit back. Not that it will anyway. Yep, yeah, player boards, player boards. So far, this is all nice and snug. More player boards. The rules three rule books, still kind of nuts. And the massive amount of punch boards, which should all fit in that plastic tray when we're done. But as of right now, don't actually even fit in the box. In a way, that's nice, because then normally what happens is they make this fit in the box. And then when you empty your box and you punch everything out, you end up with all this extra space at the top. And you can't store the game vertically because all the parts fall everywhere. By doing it this way, once it's all punched, it's going to fit tight. It's a nice bonus, actually. So... That was Venos the Deluxe Edition from Eagle Griffin Games, unboxed here live on Twitch, which you're probably now watching this on YouTube, which I appreciate. If you do dig this video, make sure you hit subscribe or follow, uh, depending on which platform you're on right now. 
If you do dig the content overall and you've checked out tabletopbellhop.com and you like what we're doing, head over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping the bellhop. That's about all I got for tonight. Uh, you can see us on Twitch. Just follow us. You'll find out when we go live. Wednesday, we record our podcast. Thursday, we often play games digitally. And Friday, we live stream, usually Gloomhaven, but sometimes something else. Thank you for watching. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night and game on.